My name is Malcolm. Uh, I work here at Airlands Greenhouses here in Tucson. Uh, my main job here is uh, propagation through cuttings. And here I have most of my stuff laid out. We like to recycle and use newspaper to line the bottom of the flats. That way uh, we don't have any uh, major spilling out of the bottom. Um, and I can show you how we get it started. Yeah. And then what are you mostly propagating here? Uh, That's a range, huh? <laughs> um, a lot of euphorbias, aloes, cacti, trees. We do a lot of, um, we do a lot of uh, boswellias, bursaras, a little bit of everything. Escleeps, yeah. hoyas. What don't I propagate? <laughs> This is brought to you by my new podcast, Bad Seeds. The phrase black market evokes sinister images. Stacks of AK-47s, crates of cocaine, but potted succulents on a windowsill? No one is calling Crime Stoppers for that. But maybe you should, because the biggest black market you've never heard of might be blooming right under your nose. This plant could sell for between ten dollars and $15,000 on the open market. And where there's big money, there are bigger risks. We were just tied up with what looked like garden string behind our backs. These big M16s stuck to our heads. I'm Summer Rain Oaks. I'm a plant expert and author. On the Bad Seeds podcast, we plunge straight into the underworld of plant crime. From Mexican drug cartels to corrupt elected officials, we explore how the black market for plants has repercussions for you, me, and the fate of the planet. Listen to Bad Seeds on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. So have you learned a lot in the process, or did you come in with a lot of knowledge around propagation? I used to work at a vet clinic. I came in with no experience besides growing a, a sedum in my windowsill. So <laughs> I think I've came a long way. Oh, very good. So what are you going to show us today? So here we have some Euphorbia tortillis. Uh, it's one of the tree Euphorbias from Kenya or East Africa. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to show you how we stick those cuttings. Okay. And I see that you're, you're not even wearing any gloves. Are you like a, an ungloved man kind of? Typically, I yeah. don't like wearing gloves. Okay. Even with the, the latex and everything that, that come from it's, a lot of euphorbias. So I've gotten it in my eye before, not directly. <laughs> it, is, it is pretty unpleasant, but um, Tiracales, those types I'm usually a bit more or, uh, cautious, cautious with. Cautious, yeah. yeah. Probably the, the best use of the news right here. <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> the way that some of the news is going these days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so on the bottom, we like to put our, our um, soil mixture. And you have a very uh, unique soil mixture. I mean, that's kind of like some really chunky. Is that perlite or is it some kind of stone? Vermiculite. vermiculite. That's what we like okay. to use here. So vermiculite, uh, compost, a little bit of um, sphagnum moss for uh, moisture retention. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. So that's what we like to use here. Uh, it's always changing. Mm -hmm. We're always trying to find better ways to do this. And me in particular, while I'm doing these cuttings, I like it to be chunkier so it drains better. Mm. So you heard it, he likes it chunky. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So about an inch and a half or so of that mix. Then on top of that, more pumice. Sorry for the dust. It's all good. A little bit more there. Yeah, so this is a s supremely well-draining mix. <laughs> During the summer, I believe the irrigation goes on um, at least every other day, uh, peak summer every day. So it needs to be well-draining for the plants that we grow here. Mm. So this is the rooting hormone we use. Uh, it has um, some fungicide in it as well to prevent rotting. And so when we take the cuts, when they're fresh, uh, for euphorbias in particular, we like to powder them. And before we stick them again, we powder them. Hmm. Just as a precaution. Then it's just simple. Just sliding that guy in, packing it around a little bit. And for um, more top heavy stuff, we like to cover it again with uh, just gravel to weigh it down a little bit. So. And how long does it usually take for this species to root? It starts rooting in maybe about two, three weeks. At about a month, it's about ready to be pulled out uh, into the production area. And about another week or two from there, we like to pot it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So it's a pretty simple process, nothing too crazy. Yeah, and then does, uh, does the potting medium change at all after it roots? Depending on what it is. So here, we, uh, with the aloes in particular, they're going to something more rich. Euphorbia is about the same, maybe a little bit more gritty. And cacti is variable. There's, as we all know, tropical cactus and more, you know, desert type cactus. So it's completely dependent on the species. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, keep on, keep on. All right. Rooting and sticking. And for euphorbias like these, I like to try and grab them in between the spines. That's how I do without gloves. I was gonna say, like you're you're uh, you're pretty badass. You know how to even kind of uh, finagle with the spines and navigate them. And I'm kind of assuming afterwards you put a a date as to when these are stuck and correct, the correct. name. Not that everybody adheres by that, but mm -hmm. that's what I like to do. Right. Mm -hmm. And we see these cuttings and they're, you know, uh, about the same size, but what's a, what's a good cutting length for this? So with most euphorbias, in my experience, which two years, I'm still learning. Um, real big cuttings are harder to root and real small cuttings have a tendency to rot out. So something in between. So this might be a little bit too small. I'm still going to try it because yep. I already took the cut. Right. But preferably something about four to six inches long, depending on the species. Um, Mill eyes, uh, Euphorbia mill eye, the Madagascar types, you can usually get away with uh, taking bigger cuts. They tend to root faster. You treat them a little different from most Euphorbias. Mm. You don't let them dry out as long. At least we don't. And what are some of the uh, plants that you are personally most interested and motivated by here? So I recently discovered uh, Turbinocarpus. So I live in a two bedroom apartment, so I don't have a whole lot of room to grow. And uh, they flower in small sizes. You can get seed from them at small sizes. They grow slow. It's a nice one. I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And is that one that you kind of discovered here? <laughs> Definitely. Um, <laughs> I couldn't tell apart two different uh, Apuntias before I started working yeah. here. Mm -hmm. And so typically cutting like this, if it was more um, linear in shape, I would stick it in this flat. But odd shaped uh, cuttings to have a tendency of falling over while rooting. So yeah. I'll probably pot this guy up separately uh, in a four or five inch pot and same, treated the same as these guys after that. Stay tuned on Plant One On Me for more botanical tours, talks, and how to's. And if you're looking to further your knowledge on the plant kingdom, then have a look at our various online courses from Troubleshoot Your House Plants to the House Plant Masterclass. Additionally, we have a second channel called Flock Finger Lakes, where we cover more on outdoor gardening, habitat restoration, agroforestry, and even more. So check that out if that interests you. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next episode.